for Junior Jones, but uh, I'm sure he can pick his head up and come back. Now, you know Junior Jones quite well. I guess, quick recap, what were the major mistakes he made? Well, first of all, you know, once you get hurt, and you know, once you, um, you're, you're kind of queasy, you should, you should be able to hold on. He said, I tried to tell Junior when I was down there to grab, to hold on, hold up for a little while, clear your head. You know, once you're hurt, you can't fight back. You can't actually fight back, and that's where he made his mistake. All right, and the other pound-for-pound -pound champion that I talked about, James Tony, the super middleweight champion. And, James, thank you very much for joining us. And I must admit that James is a little queasy about being up high. We're about three stories high right now, and this is the only opponent that I've seen James Tony a little nervous about, but you're going to be okay. Yeah, man, I'm not too fine of heights. And um, with no support, like we got ropes and everything, it's kind of kind of rough up here. <laughs> Let's move ahead and talk about the main event. Uh, you know Michael Moore. Many people don't know Michael Moore. He has a, a demeanor of being very detached, very aloof. Is that the real Michael Moore or is he playing games with the public? Well, what you're seeing is um, basically the real Michael Moore. He's a quiet person until somebody stares him up. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's good for him. When I see Michael Moore the other day, he's in the right frame of mind. He ready. And when Michael Moore is in the right frame of mind, he don't have everything intact. Can't nobody out there stop him. Well, speaking of being ready, Purnell, that's one thing um, Evander Holyfield has never accused of not being ready. But, again, he's fighting a southpaw. You can certainly speak to the uniqueness of that style. What will be most problematic for Evander going against a southpaw? Well, you have to have the uh, perfect angles. I'm sure in the gym and, and training camp, the, the trainer went over time and time again which way he has to go, which way he has to move his feet, and what to be thinking about. Actually, he can't be looking at the left hand because the right, the right hook is always there. But... Um, me knowing Evander, he's been around in the game a long time. He's capable of uh, adapting to any kind of style. But it's going to be a great fight, and you know? the fans are going to get a very good treat. Quickly, what's it going to take for Michael Moore to do it? He's trying to become the first Southpaw heavyweight champion ever. What's it going to take, James? What well, Michael's going to do, he can't sit back and wait on Evander. He has to go out, you know, have to go to him right away, put the pressure to him, make Evander fight when he don't want to fight. And if he do that, he'll be successful, and he'll be the new heavyweight champ. All right. Hey, fellas, thank you very much. I truly appreciate it. Got to ask you, though, now, and I know putting modesty aside, putting friendship aside, who do you like and why? Oh, well, of course my heart is with Evander. And, um, you know, it's been a long time with, with the 10 years that we've spent together through the Olympics and, and up to date. But uh, I think with the frame of mind, he's ready. He's out there. He's ready to go do his job. But in any, any lack of days of court or loss of focus, he loses the fight. How's your basketball game? Oh, sucking around NBA. Anybody <laughs> watching? My family knows I'm good. All right, Pernell and James Tony, thank you very much. We'll get you off of this high scaffolding, thank fellas. Thank you very much. Coming up next, the Junior Lightweight Championship fight between James John John Molina, that is, and Gorio Vargas. And right now, let's take you back downstairs ringside to Jim Lampley. All right, thank you very much, James Brown. Indeed, this 130 pound championship fight now between John John Molina of Puerto Rico and Gregorio Vargas, nicknamed Goyo Vargas of Mexico, Larry Merchant. What do we know about these two warriors? Well, what we know is that when they collide... Vargas. Molina with about two and a half inches of height advantage, but the reach turns out to be identical because Vargas is relatively long arm. Punch that numbers, Larry. And let's see how active they are, and this is a reflection of how they fight. Molina throws a lot of punches. Vargas is a more calculating puncher. Molina, although he is a very aggressive fighter, does throw a lot of jabs. Vargas lands a lot of big punches. And the rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. John John Molina and Goyo Vargas will box tonight using the rules of the International Boxing Federation. 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the last. Only the referee can stop the fight, and in case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we go to the scorecards if the six rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim. Thank you, Harold. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here at Caesars Palace, main events monitor in association with your undisputed king of beers, Budweiser, presents part two of our boxing championship triple header. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and the International Boxing Federation. The supervisor ringside for the IBF will be Robert W. Lee Jr. The three judges assigned to score this bout on a 10-point must system will be Bill Graham. 
Nelson Vasquez and Hector Vilches. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action working in a world championship bout for the 63rd time, referee Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, weighing in at 130 pounds, wearing white, red, and green trim, from Hidalgo, Mexico. He brings a professional record of 29 victories, 20 by KO, against four defeats with one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, he's ranked number eight in the world. Introducing the challenger, Gregorio Goyo Vargas. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Weighing in at 129 and one half pounds, wearing the colors of his native Puerto Rico, red, white, and blue. His professional record, 34 and three, 25 KO victories. Ladies and gentlemen, from Fajardo, Puerto Rico, presenting the IBF Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Juan Chanjan Molina. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the respect of national anthems. First, the anthem of Mexico. Mágico primor, un cielo siempre nítido, nos sirve de dosel y dan arrullos plácidos las olas a sus pies cuando a sus playas llegó Colón, exclamó lleno de admiración. Oh, esa es la linda tierra que busco yo es Borinquen la hija la hija del mar y el sol del mar y el sol del mar y el sol He did, he paid you credit I want, I want burgers He paid you tribute and credit that's what you'll get here Round one between Molina and Vargas it is Molina who is in the decorated red, white, and blue trunks. Vargas in the colors of Mexico. Certainly John John Molina presents the more powerful picture. But we know that Gregorio Vargas has punching power. He floored Kevin Kelly even while losing his title to him back in December. And incidentally, one final postscript on Jones Johnson. A peek at the scorecards indicates exactly what we might have expected. Junior Jones was leading, but Johnson still had a mathematical chance to win the fight by decision. Both fighters with some good moments in the first minute of round one here. Molina showing the left hook to good advantage. Hey, suéltalo. Cuidado con la cabeza adentro. Cuidado con la cabeza adentro. Saca los golpes, suéltalo. Saca los golpes, suéltalo. Referee Joe Cortez, now living here in Nevada, a great choice for this fight for obvious reasons. The fight is going real slow because both fellas are real confident in their punching power. So there's not going to be a lot of filling out with jabs. 
also Vargas is being a little bit passive at this point. He won't be that way for long. They trade left hands. Vargas tried a right hand lead, didn't get it across. This time he lands with the right hand lead. John John Molina came back with a left hook there. Not many jabs, both fighters looking for a chance to throw power punches. A couple of body shots inside by Vargas. And a gratuitous one as Cortez breaks him apart. Good right hand by Gregorio Vargas. Didn't do much to Molina, he stood still. Evander Holyfield warming up. Hands wrapped, not yet with the gloves on. A little while to go before they'll do that. And nearby, Michael Moore. Quiet, passive, projecting the image of sullen self-protectiveness, which is Part of his outlook on the world, seemingly 24 hours a day. But as usual, quite aware that he's on camera too. They tape those hands so that no one can go over with new, brand new tape after the judges leave the, the dressing room. Speaking not at all, but carrying big fists. That's Moore. Round two begins, 130 pound championship at stake. The champion is John John Molina of Puerto Rico in the red, white, and blue. Gregorio Vargas landed a big right hand toward the end of round one. Did not appear to move the seemingly stronger Molina. Now both fighters begin to open up a little more as the second round begins. Punches through round two. Molina more active. Vargas more accurate. Vargas landing slightly more power punches. Molina many, many more jabs. Good left hand by Molina, and he lands a right behind it. Vargas trying to trade punches with Molina. Might not be the best idea, George. Not at all. He should jab, jab, and go to the body, take some of the win out of this giant of a guy break, break, at break, 130. Break, break. You got to get some of that uh, power out of him by hitting body, using body punches. He, Vargas hasn't went to the body enough. Once you go into the body, then you can exchange. Alina moving in, shortening the distance on the jab. Has felt Vargas's power, and for the moment appears to believe he can take what Vargas has to throw. Vargas lands a straight right and another right underneath. Good body shot by Molina. Precise technical work by John John Molina. He's doing an excellent job of body punching and then going back up to the head to see if that body punch hurt. Uppercut by Molina just missed. Chopping right hand did land. Vargas landed a couple shots in return. But it is Molina whose punches are landing harder right now. Right hand by Vargas. Molina trades a right to the body. Vargas can't believe that these <laughs> straight right hand is not having any effect on this guy at this point. Those extra pounds make a difference. Yeah, if you were to look at the difference between Molina and Vargas's last opponent, little Kevin Kelly from New York, you would never believe it was only four pounds of difference. Those four pounds are worlds of difference. Oh, 
Alina backs Vargas up to the ropes with body shots. Vargas comes back with a left hook and a straight left. Round three comes to a close. John John Molina, the champion, finishing most of these exchanges. And much more the active fighter. She's his right-hand woman. They work together very closely. She's a sister, she's a friend, and she has a lot of style. I used to go through all these head trips. I'm not really a good athlete because I'm pretty. You can't do that. Always wear smudge-proof mascara. Watch your weight. Be aggressive. Boys like it when you make the first call. It was great to see us ready to plummet into the 21st century in these high-tech fabrics. FT Fashion Television, 6.30 Saturday and Sunday on City. Okay, stand by. Right, here we go. There are films about the way we lived and the way we worked. Films designed to train us as good consumers. Cheer up, kid. We'll have television soon. What do you like most about the business? Acting. And the people that I've met, I've met some extraordinary people. Excellent! Tom Selleck was supposed to be Indiana Jones. He was all set to do it. The last moment he couldn't. Go behind the scenes with MT Movie Television, 8 Saturday, 7 Sunday on City. Featuring Mr. and Mrs. Ray Leonard. I want you to see, there he is. Look at that. That's Jill Ake, Goodacre in the video. Now married to Harry Connick Jr. He's put on the, uh, the garb now that you're more, more accustomed to seeing him wearing. George, but I think Vargas looks a little bit more comfortable now. I think so. He's getting in less and less of uh, the power exchange. He's able to land his jab occasionally. But he's have a tendency to wait, and you just can't wait for Duva fighters to get tired. You just better get in and get your points early. They have a tendency to get stronger and stronger. You're saying you expect Molina to be well conditioned. That's true, and Vargas. To think that hey, I'll get him in a minute. It just doesn't happen with these strong legged guys. Molina does present an awfully robust picture in there for 130 pounds. Okay. Hey, Harold Letterman, your score through four rounds. Larry, you know, Goyo Vargas complained vehemently that he was the effective aggressor against Kevin Kelly. But I want to tell you something. It's totally the opposite in this fight. John John Molina winning this fight four rounds to nothing, 40 to 36 on effective aggressiveness. He's getting off first, landing more shots, landing the cleaner punches. Uh, beautiful ring generalship. He gets off first constantly, backs up Molina. It's all Molina. I scored the first round even. There's Kevin Costner. At ringside, Magic Johnson, another regular at these big fights. For the moment, still go to the Los Angeles Lakers, right, second, along second, with second, wife Cookie, second, incidentally, second. who was on the right of your screen there with her. Along about this time, I wonder if Vargas's handlers are beginning to think it wasn't such a hot idea after a tough fight with Kevin Kelly to come back a few months later against John John Molina. Totally agree. It'll take some drama for Vargas to turn it around and make it look like a good choice. But of course, in the first three rounds of our first bout this evening, you would never have thought that John Michael Johnson was going to find a way to beat Poison Junior Jones. There's a solid right hand landing over the top by Molina. He follows up with a body shot and another right hand. Vargas still trying to trade with him when he gets hit. 
Molina just busting through Vargas's guard with that hard left jab. Talk about respect. Molina faints with the shoulder now, and Vargas moves away. I tell you that four pounds hurts. But Vargas is making a stand here or a statement that he's not going to go away quietly. Well, he loves to trade punches. It's his natural instinct to flurry and trade punches and think that he's going to win the exchange. And at 126 pounds, he almost always did. Molina had better must up a bit more respect, though. Vargas can punch. Lou Duval will tell Molina to stay within a tight arc, keep his punches short, resist the temptation to throw haymakers just because he's landing. And haymakers, they are landing tonight. Molina is putting those haymakers in. Yep, he's gotten a couple of wide right hands in here. Even when you block them, they hurt you because your glove protects you, but it hits you on the face too. Vargas landing a straight right over the top. Vargas may be hoping, just as John Michael Johnson did, that the Eastern Seaboard fighter will wilt in the heat. But of course, Molinas is from Fajardo, Puerto Rico. Vargas is still mindful of throwing quick short rights to the body. Very much like round four. Some good exchanges, a lot of trading. John John Molina simply stronger than Gregorio Vargas. And we remind you, still to come, and in all likelihood what you're waiting for, the heavyweight championship battle between Evander Holyfield and number one IBF contender Michael Moore. Moore trying to become the first Southpaw in history to hold a heavyweight championship. He's only the third southpaw ever to challenge for a heavyweight title. And here's Molina coming in with a wide arcing right hand over the left of Vargas. They're having the same punch. They're having wonderful exchanges in the middle of, of the ring. This ring could be about a quarter of the size it is. Okay. And it wouldn't make any difference to them the way they're fighting. Okay. In round five, Gregorio Vargas landed at a 44% rate. That's the good news. The bad news is he threw only 54 punches, while John John Molina was nearly doubling him with a 104 punch output. Referee Joe Cortez warning both fighters to watch their heads. Prevent butting. George, before the fight, I spoke about trying to compare these developed fighters to Oscar De La Hoya. What do you see? Uh, Oscar De La Hoya has a difference, and it's, it's with combinations and skill. This, this guy is really a comer. These guys are good fighters, but they're only good. Oscar has a tendency to move up a step higher, if you ask me. You're saying he's got the potential to be better than just good. That's right. And this is what we'll send the best that these fighters got. It may be a question sooner rather than later because John John Molina just landed about four spectacular right hands in that exchange. Vargas's head was snapping back. He landed one solid right in return, but took a lot of punishment as Molina, a more and more confident fighter, is unleashing that right hand inside. There's another one. Vargas is going to have to find a way to stop the right cross, George. It's driving him nuts, those looping roundhouse punches that Molina are throwing. It's driving Vargas crazy. If he can only just say go right between them, but if he goes between them, he gets hit at the same time. Good thinking by Molina. 
After landing all those right crosses up top, he backs Vargas up with a couple of body shots. Vargas steps in with a right-hand lead. He seems determined to make that punch work. Another right hand. There's a right hand for Vargas. Molina can take a fight like this all night, but Vargas with that extra weight, it's not in his best interest to keep mixing it up like that. That's what he's wanted to do all night, Vargas. Make him miss with that looping right hand and keep a counter going with his right hand. And as he made Molina miss the second time, he was able to step in with a hard left hand to the body. I think that's what he needs to do, George, is find a way to step inside of Molina's power and attack his body. And the thing about it, when he, does, when he steps in, this guy is so strong that it hurts just to step in. Good, good, good. Jan -jan. Jan -jan. No one jab. I'm saying jab right hand and left hook. Okay? Don't let you. And when you're down, right? Up, 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 and okay. come up. Okay? 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 Okay. He's got a jab, throw a combination that were fast right hands. Jab and combination, rapid, okay? Throw, you have to throw punches. Right. Get close to the guy and throw that hook. Throw that right hook. Let's go. Come on out. Good right hand to start round seven by Gregorio Vargas. They're more than halfway home in the scheduled 12-round bout for John John Molina's IBF Light Welterweight Championship. As you can see, his corner didn't tell him to go out. Uh, uh, John John Molina won his fight so big, it was ridiculous. Uh, absolutely a big, big victory. 119, 109. John John Molina. I think Goyo Vargas stopped more shots with his face than Mike Richter stopped in three NFL games so far in a Stanley Cup playoffs. Those would be NHL games, but well said, Harold. We understand the point. To make a long story short, you're saying you gave the last round to Vargas and it's not a shutout on your scorecard. All right, we'll find out how the judges said uh, this one went in just a couple of minutes. But to recap, you've been watching John John Molina of Puerto Rico from uh, the main events camp of Lou Duva defending his IBF Junior Lightweight Championship against challenger Gregorio Vargas of Mexico. This the final preliminary prior to the heavyweight championship bout upcoming between Evander Holyfield and number one IBF contender Michael Moore. And we go up now to Michael Buffer for the official decision in this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Caesars Palace, we go to the scorecards. Nelson Vasquez scores the bout 118 to 110. Hector Vilshi scores it 117 to 112, and Bill Graham scores it 118 to 110 for the winner by unanimous decision and still IBF Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Juan Chunjan Molina. Great performance by Molina. He maintains his hold on that title and enhances his reputation as one of the better fighters in the sport. And we hope for Gregorio Vargas's sake, in the wake of this latest disappointment, that his managers can find a better situation for him next time around. Yeah, they have to back off maybe for at least a year, give him some easy opponents, restore his confidence, and get him back to the featherweight division. Agreed, George? I'm totally in agreement this time. All right. Let's go up to James Brown as we get ready for the heavyweights.
All right, Jim, thank you very much. And speaking of the confidence of Goyo Vargas, he had remarked prior to the bout that the straight-ahead style employed by John John Molina should fit right into his bag. In fact, every fighter who's employed that style had fallen quickly. That would not be the case tonight as John John Molina looked very, very formidable as he defended his title successfully. All right, the last time that TVK brought you heavyweight championship fighting was from right here at Caesars Palace. That back on November the 6th, the rematch of Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bowe. And the fight was a memorable one, not only for what took place in the ring, but outside the ring as well. That was a night that fight fans were shocked by the paraglider you see here. James Miller, a.k.a. Fan Man, who stopped the fight by flying in early in the seventh round. As you take a look, he actually tried to land in the ring, was caught on the ropes, and that stopped the fight for about 21 minutes. The security force here at Caesars Palace responded quickly. And this was done without regard for the safety of the combatants or the fans. And as you can see, Miller was the worst for the wear. Well, folks will be pleased to know that yesterday, in a plea bargain agreement, Miller was sentenced to 10 days in jail, an eight-day sentence because of two days he had already served. That sentence started yesterday, and in fact, there will not be a return engagement here tonight by one James Miller. And that certainly has to be good news for the man sitting to my right, the chairman of the board and chief executive officer of Caesars World, Mr. Henry Gluck. And uh, again, you really have to be pleased, at least on the part of James Miller, that he won't be back here tonight. Yeah, we're indeed pleased about that because uh, that could have been a very, very explosive situation. We had about 40,000 people on the property. And it was probably Caesar's Palace at its finest. Our, our security people were up there in just a matter of seconds. We were able to control the crowd. The announcer got up and uh, satisfied everybody and uh, quieted things down. And we were just very happy that it went away without any incident. And, um, you know, these are very, very dangerous situations. You spend a constant amount of time preparing for that moment. And when it finally comes, you hope that you're ready. You talk about spending countless hours preparing for that. You've had to do more than that now since that took place. What are the additional precautions that you've taken in case an imitator wants to try to do likewise? Well, the first thing we've done is we have a metro helicopter. We're just flying a reasonably low altitude, circling the stadium. Uh, we have about 40 additional security officers. We have police on every rooftop. We have just additional awareness of all of our security people. We have outside contract security officers. We have police dogs uh, and bomb squads, uh, just about every single precaution that you think you could be taken. All right, and we're certainly very pleased to hear that, and we look forward to a distraction-free main event tonight. Mr. Henry Gluck, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, and in fact, the action should be only in the ring tonight, and that's what we're hoping for. So the stage is set for the heavyweight championship matchup that will feature Evander Holyfield and Michael Moore. For weeks now, two warriors have done nothing but prepare themselves. All their energies and all their abilities have focused on this one night in the Las Vegas desert. they train, each man looked to the future, asking himself, what must I learn and how hard must I work to defeat this man who will stand across from me? and wisdom from glorious battles past. Look at Holyfield! What a warrior! Reversing the tide of the battle. The champion now has full wobbly. Oh, maybe hurt. He is really hurt. Holyfield gunning for a stoppage here. It would shock the world. In the end, it all comes down to this. Shortly, there will be two warriors, two titles at stake, and two opposing forces. 
the will to win of Evander Holyfield and the power to destroy of Michael Moore. In the end, there will only be one victor. This TVKO presentation for the heavyweight championship of the world is brought to you by Budweiser. Proud to be your bud. And on a pleasant, comfortable evening in the desert, a near-capacity crowd is on hand here at the outdoor boxing arena at Caesars Palace to find out if a fortune seeker by the name of Michael Moore, the number one heavyweight contender, can put together the right combinations to dethrone the current WBA and IBF heavyweight champion, Evander Holyfield. Good evening once again, everyone. I'm James Brown. Well, tonight's heavyweight championship bout will feature two fighters who are in absolutely excellent condition. And I think excellent condition certainly.